Welcome to episode 258 of Build Your House Yourself University by Hi You. I'm your host and fellow student, Michelle Nelson, and together we'll learn the basics of home design and construction and demystify the building process so we can make smart decisions and build quality dream homes with or without a general contractor. So I am so glad to be back. I apologize for my abrupt departure a few weeks ago. I just have had no time to do the research that I need to do for this podcast. My full-time job has been busier than ever. I mean, literally ever since I've been there since 2004. My hours are a bit better now, but for several weeks there, I was working 12 to 16 hours a day regularly, and I just did not have time to put into the podcast. So please forgive me. Thank you so much for your patience and for not sending me nasty emails. I felt really guilty about not providing you with new shows, but I just literally didn't have any time. No exaggeration. Special thanks goes to Jonathan Schmidt for checking on me via Facebook to make sure that everything was okay. And I'm fine and everything is okay. There's been a little bit of drama with my project, but I personally am good. I just didn't have time. So on another episode coming up in the near future, I'll talk about the many hiccups and challenges that I've had with my house. And if you're wondering, yes, we are still working on it. I'll give you more details pretty soon. So make sure that you follow the show so new episodes will automatically be downloaded to your podcast library as soon as they're available. All right, let's get into some new content. Several weeks ago in episode 254 called Furniture Layout and Space Planning, I gave some guidelines about furniture placement and how to best lay out your rooms to achieve functional, aesthetically pleasing spaces that have good flow. After listening back to that episode, though, I realized I didn't talk much about bedrooms. So that's what we'll discuss this time. Space planning rules specifically for bedrooms. If you've listened to my past decorating episodes, you should know about the three F's. Do you remember those? Okay, this is a pop quiz. What are the three F's? I first introduced the concept of the three F's in episode 204 called Your Home's Interior Design, What to Do and Where to Start, Part 2. Well, the three F's are function, focal point, and feeling. Remember that? The three F's are always a good starting point for designing any space. So let's consider the three F's for the bedroom. Function is always first. For most people, the bedroom functions first and foremost as a place to relax and sleep. It's also a place for intimacy for adults. And kids' bedrooms are often a place to play. Other activities that might take place in a bedroom include watching TV work and homework, and reading. Which activities will take place in your bedrooms will determine what furniture and what furniture placement you'll need. Think about what you'll be doing in the bedroom and make sure to include the furniture, electronics, storage solutions, and accessories that will make the room function well for you and your family members. For example, Does the bed in your primary bedroom serve as a family movie watching space on Friday nights or Saturday mornings? If so, you'll probably want to choose a king-sized bed to accommodate everyone and a large TV across from the bed. Or what about this scenario? Do you like to work on your laptop while you're in your bedroom? And do you like to sit up in bed while on your laptop? Or is sitting in a chair or at a desk your preference? Think through your habits and preferences to help you come up with a furniture list. If you like working on a computer while in bed, you might want to consider an adjustable mattress that would let you comfortably sit up. Or if you prefer sitting at a desk in your bedroom, maybe use a small desk as your bedside table or place a desk at the foot of your bed or in the corner of the room. Now, I realize that some people will say that you shouldn't work or watch TV in your bedroom but it's your bedroom. 
and you should do what works for you. Okay, so that was function. Second is focal point, the starring feature of the room, the main attraction in the space. Now, I didn't say the only attraction, but the focal point is the main attention getter in the room. Most often, the focal point in the bedroom is the bed. But if you want a very simple, very understated bed, you might choose something else for your focal point. Something like wallpaper, artwork, a rug, lighting fixture, or a fireplace. Choose the focal point in the room and let all other pieces in the room be the supporting cast. The supporting cast pieces can be pretty and functional too, but they give center stage to the focal point. The third F is feeling. The feeling you want the room to evoke or the feeling you want to experience when you're in the space. The main feeling words that people want for the bedroom usually include things like relaxed, calm, tranquil, happy, content, safe, cozy, light and airy, sexy, or moody. Let your feeling word guide your color palette and the style of furniture and accessories. Choose pieces that will contribute to the feeling you want in the bedroom. For example, if you want your bedroom to feel light and airy, you probably shouldn't choose a color palette that includes lots of deep charcoal gray. But charcoal gray might work well if you want your room to feel moody or cozy. Because the bedroom is one of the simplest rooms in the house, decisions about its decor are sometimes made without thinking through the entire design. But your goal when thinking about your bedroom decor is to choose pieces that hopefully hit all of your Fs, all three of them. You want bedroom furnishings and floor plans that give you everything you need to function in the space efficiently and to rest well and feel good. Here are 11 more tips that will help you get the most out of your bedroom. Number one, think about the bed first. The first natural step of any bedroom layout is, as you can imagine, the bed placement. Since the bed is the most utilized and usually the largest piece of furniture in the room, decide where you'll put it first before you think about any other furniture pieces. Generally, you'll want to put the bed against the largest wall with no windows or between two windows if it'll fit. Ideally, you'll want the bed to be accessible on both sides leaving at least three feet of space around the sides and at the foot of the bed. If your room is not large enough to allow for at least three feet of space around the sides and the end of the bed, instead of using a king-sized bed, consider a queen. Only if absolutely necessary should you place a bed in a corner where the top of the bed and one side of the bed are butting up against walls. That corner bed location can easily be avoided if you work with your architect or study your house plans early on and make sure you have enough wall space in each bedroom to locate the bed. Think about bed placement in every single bedroom before you finalize your house plans. Think through opening doors in the bedroom and assure that the bed won't get in the way when opening doors of the bedroom itself, the closets, and the bathroom. Also position the bed so it doesn't obstruct the walkways to the bathroom and closet. Finally, if you like watching TV in bed, if possible, choose a bed wall that has a place on the wall directly across from it for the TV. Number two, choose furniture in size order. After you decide the best place for your bed, which is usually the largest piece in the bedroom again, arrange your other pieces around it. Go from bigger to smaller. So after the bed, think about your dressers, love seats, chairs, desks, benches, and or nightstands. Think about where those things will go. Obviously, smaller bedrooms won't have as many pieces, but for larger bedrooms, which can accommodate several furniture pieces, it's especially important to plan out your furniture placement in advance. That brings me to the next tip. Number three. Sketch out the layout first. I know that I've said this in several previous episodes, but it bears repeating because it's so important. It's easier to draw out different furniture arrangements on paper 
and that might mean graph paper, or online in an online room planner. But what you want to do is do this before you make decisions about or purchase your furniture. Try out as many different layout options as you can think of. Make sure that walkways are free of furniture and that you can easily move around the space. Don't forget now, walkways should be at least three feet wide. Number four, choose a nightstand that's not too high and not too low. The top of the nightstand should be about the same height as the top of your mattress, give or take a couple of inches. That allows you to easily access items on top of and inside the nightstand without much trouble. If you're ordering your bed frame and or mattress online, take the height of the mattress platform of your bed and add that to the height or thickness of your mattress. That number will give you the approximate nightstand height that you want. If you have the space and like the look, you can use small dressers as nightstands. Those small dressers give the bedroom a higher end look. Just that large scale of furniture beside the bed makes the room look more expensive. And it also allows for a lot more storage. Just make sure that whatever you choose, it's the appropriate height. Number five, make sure art above the bed is not too low. When hanging art or a mirror above your bed, you don't need to center it vertically between the top of the headboard and the ceiling. But what you do want to do is make sure that there's at least five inches of space between the bottom of the art and the top of the headboard. I personally like way more than five inches between the headboard and the artwork, especially if you have tall ceilings. But five inches of space between the bottom of the art and the top of the headboard is the minimum recommended. Another note here is that if you live in an earthquake-prone region and want something above your bed, consider something soft, like a tapestry. That way, if it falls during an earthquake, it won't cause any injuries. Number six, choose a bed frame profile that fits the space and your age. As a general rule, bed frames that are lower to the floor, like platform beds, make the room look larger. Platform beds are a little bit more contemporary too, and generally more casual looking. And lower beds are obviously a great choice for smaller children. Higher beds, on the other hand, are a bit more traditional or transitional looking and a little bit more formal. Extra low or extra high beds can be visually interesting, but keep in mind that both extremes can be harder to get into and out of, especially as you get older. Number seven, don't overcrowd your bedroom. Too much furniture in the bedroom can make the room feel claustrophobic. Definitely include all the furniture pieces that are necessary to allow the space to function the way you need it to, but be very thoughtful about any additional furnishings. Every wall, every corner, and every surface does not need to be filled. Empty spaces and surfaces give your eye a place to rest and appreciate the pieces that are in the space. Too much stuff means too much stimulus, and in a bedroom, that can diminish the calm, relaxing feeling that most of us want. Now, if you're a maximalist who's comforted by lots of color, pattern, and stuff, just ignore this tip. Number eight, choose a large-scale rug. When selecting a rug for your bedroom, look for one that will extend at least one foot further than your bed on each side and at the foot of the bed. A larger rug would be even better, but those guidelines are for the smallest rug you should consider. The top edge of the rug should be approximately eight inches from the wall against which the headboard is placed. If you absolutely can't avoid the corner bed location that we talked about earlier, your rug should be placed beside the bed. If you like the idea of wall-to-wall -wall carpeting in the bedroom, but also see the value and beauty of hardwood flooring in the room, you can buy an oversized area rug if that's in your budget. And then let a couple of feet of hardwood peek out along the perimeter of the room or the rug. 
You can also get an oversized rug made by cutting carpet and getting it bound into a rug. This option is often less expensive than buying a quality oversized area rug. If you prefer wall-to-wall carpeting in the bedroom, go for it. In some rooms of a custom home, like a living room, wall-to-wall carpeting is thought of as less expensive looking and therefore less desirable. But in bedrooms, walk-in closets, and media rooms, wall-to-wall carpeting is deemed appropriate and sometimes preferable even in high-end homes. Number nine, arrange new furniture around what you already have. Decide how much of the furniture you currently own you want to go into your new bedrooms. Don't buy new furniture until you've taken into account the pieces you already have. Now, I know this seems obvious, but in the excitement of shopping for new stuff, it's easy to buy more pieces than you actually need. When planning your furniture layout on paper, Arrange what you already have first. Then you'll know exactly what pieces you need to fill in the gaps. Number 10, consider sight lines. In the best case scenario, you don't want the bed directly across from the bathroom door. You want to avoid seeing directly into the bathroom when you're in bed. If the bed needs to be on a wall opposite the bathroom door, Place the bed to the left or to the right of that door if possible. It's okay if you see a little bit of the bathroom from the bed, but you don't want whomever's in the bathroom to feel like they're on display if the bathroom door happens to be open and their partner is in bed. Now, this next point is pretty nitpicky, and it's nice to do, but definitely not necessary. If you can, design your bedroom so the first thing you see when entering the room is a view through the window. When designing your house with the architect, take that into consideration. If you can't make that happen, don't despair. But in an ideal world, you'd be able to see out of the window as you're entering your bedroom. Speaking of sight lines, our last tip, number 11, keep privacy in mind. To increase privacy, even when the bedroom door is open, if possible, Position the bed so it's not directly across from the bedroom entrance. This is especially important for the primary bedroom where adults might be doing adult things. You don't want your bed front and center if someone is looking into the room. For even more privacy, you can add a small foyer or vestibule before entering the primary bedroom. It's clearly not the end of the world if the bed is directly across from the bedroom entrance. That's how my current bedroom is set up. I don't like it, but it's okay. We've learned to live with it. But more privacy is definitely preferred. So those are my tips for designing a functional bedroom that fits your style and preferences. I hope they help you. If you know of anyone who's building or remodeling a house or simply redoing their bedroom, please share this episode with them by email or text. You can also post this episode on your home building and design groups on Facebook and Instagram. That's so helpful if you want to support the show. Listen, I want to thank you again for your patience and for sticking with me. I appreciate you so much. I missed you. And fingers crossed that my workload doesn't get too busy again. If so... I will talk to you in a couple of weeks on the next episode of Build Your House Yourself University. Bye, hi, you. Please remember that the purpose of this podcast is simply to educate and inform. It's not a substitute for professional advice. The information that you hear is based only on the opinions, research, and experiences of my guests and myself. That information might be incomplete, it's subject to change, and it may not apply to your project. In addition, building codes and requirements vary from region to region, so always consult a professional about specific recommendations for your home.